Hey guys, what's up, Roman here from Tech Guides, and in this video, I'm comparing every upscaling and sharpening filter in Modern Warfare 2 and Warzone to help you find the best sharpening settings for more performance and better visibility. So for this, I perform benchmarks of every upscaling setting after the Season 4 Reloaded update, both on my primary system, for which you can see details on screen in blue right now, as well as on my secondary system, shown in yellow. Now I will first go through the upscaling filters as they appear in game and then move on to the sharpening settings. So if you wish to either skip to the conclusions or a specific setting, then feel free to use the timestamps in the description. Finally, I'll provide all of the performance metrics as well as side-by-side -side comparisons on my blog techguides.yt such that you can check them out and pixel peep the differences yourself. There's a lot of material to go through in this video, so let's jump right into it. Starting off with Intel XESS, you can see the performance of the different presets on screen right now. Just to explain this graphic real quick, the blue bars are for my primary system, the orange bars for the secondary system, the dark blue and dark orange colors show the average FPS, whereas the light blue and light orange colors show the 1% lows. We can see that the performance boost with Intel XSS is more pronounced on a system which is more CPU bound, such as my secondary system, whereas performance improvements on my primary system, which is more GPU bound, are much less pronounced. In fact, the ultra quality preset actually reduces performance, so you should definitely stay away from that if you're somewhat GPU bound. Visually, we can see that the performance mode at only 50% resolution leads to a very soft image, which doesn't have a lot of clarity or details. XES Balanced runs the game at roughly 60% resolution, which slightly improves the situation, but obviously everything is still pretty blurry. As we've seen before, quality would be the highest preset that I would recommend on Intel XESS because ultra quality simply does not provide any performance improvements and I'd say that especially the anti-aliasing looks pretty nice on this preset, however we are still losing some details. And finally here's ultra quality which basically produces perfect anti-aliasing at a bit of a performance hit. Here you can see the performance gains when using NVIDIA DLSS and just to mention that the ultra performance and performance mode are identical on a system that only runs a 1080p display because they run the game at the same resolution. On the other hand, on a 1440p or 4K display, the ultra performance mode renders the game at only 33%. Here's ultra performance and quite surprisingly the game doesn't look like absolute trash. However, the low render resolution becomes very apparent when comparing textures as well as text. And if we look for instance at very small objects, you can see that they kind of get lost um, because they're smaller than what they can be resolved at this low resolution. Moreover, we can see strong fringing around moving objects, which is one of the major disadvantages of the LSS because it always introduces these kind of double edges around fast moving objects no matter the preset that you're using. Moving up to the performance preset, which actually runs the game at half the native resolution and that still provides quite a significant boost in terms of performance, but we can see that textures are still very low res, however we get slightly better anti-aliasing. At this preset we sort of stop losing details that are too small to actually be resolved However, at the same time, we can still find loads of frames with significant fringing. Visually, there is not much of an improvement when going to DLSS balanced. Honestly, textures are almost similarly resolved. That is because we only get 7% more resolution from 50 to 57%. Still, small objects are no longer lost and anti-aliasing looks pretty good. Unfortunately, this preset, however, does not improve upon the fringing issue. Finally, DLSS quality is the highest possible DLSS preset in Modern Warfare 2 and we can see that although this is the best preset, textures are still slightly blurry. On the other hand, anti-aliasing looks definitely much better than the native resolution and at the same time this is basically the only preset where I had to look pretty hard to find frames that showed noticeable fringing. Now before I move on, I'd like to talk about something that I am super stoked to present to you and that is the sponsor of today's video, Privado VPN. Now, before you're gonna skip ahead, hear me out. I've been contacted by basically any VPN provider on this planet. However, Privato VPN is completely different. First and foremost, they are a Swiss registered company and that means that they actually have to abide to Swiss privacy laws, which are basically one of the best privacy laws in the world. Second, Privato VPN offers a completely free tier. You get actually 10 gigabytes every 30 days. And what's even more crazy is that they do not throttle your speed even in the free tier. 
Third, they have unlimited speeds. So here, for instance, I'm connecting to the Frankfurt server and I'm getting 1.5 gigabits down and 500 megabits up, which is absolutely insane on VPN. Also, you get extremely low latency on Privato VPN, which makes it ideal to play on. So definitely check out Privato VPN using my link in the description and get 77% off a yearly subscription. And with that, let's move on to NVIDIA image scaling. Performance wise, we can see that the quality balanced and performance preset all result in roughly the same FPS with ultra quality giving slightly less boost in performance and native as the name implies using the native resolution obviously doesn't result in any performance uplifts. The performance preset, which runs at 50% native resolution, produces a very grainy and very aliased image, especially if we compare this to Intel XSS, which I'll do later in this video. The balanced preset doesn't really offer much of an improvement over the performance preset. And frankly, neither does the quality preset. Ultra quality is probably the only preset that I would recommend. However, since it's not possible to add anti-aliasing, I still think that the image is simply too grainy. Finally, here's the native profile, which I'll later compare to FXCAS. In the FSR 1.0 provides a significant boost in performance on both systems. However, it seems to be stronger in CPU bound scenarios. Going through the different presets, we can see that in the performance mode, uh, we still get a very blocky and low res picture, which is slightly improved when going to balanced and quality. And finally, if we go to ultra quality, we can see that we are very close to native resolution now in terms of the visual clarity. And there is pretty much the same amount of aliasing and details are almost similarly resolved as with the native resolution while still giving you a nice FPS boost. And the FSR 2.0 actually has one preset which is below performance and that is the ultra performance preset which is once again identical to the performance mode at 1080p. Unsurprisingly, the ultra performance mode produces very poor image quality and it actually appears that some parts of the image are actually rendered in a much lower resolution than the rest. This is still pretty much the case when moving up to the performance mode so I honestly wouldn't recommend either of these presets. Moving up to the balance preset, we can see that now the image starts to look sort of usable and we actually get some nice anti-aliasing. Finally, FSR 2.0 and the quality preset looks pretty pleasing to the eye. You have a lot of details and you got very nice anti-aliasing. So if you need a bit of a boost in performance and you don't want to use the regular anti-aliasing, then this might be a very nice option. So to summarize the upscaling part, I'll now show side by side the different upscalers at the same render resolution together with their performance metrics to help you pick the best upscaler for your use case. At 50%, the highest performing algorithm is NVIDIA Image Scaling and FSR 1.0. Both of them are super grainy and you'll lose a lot of details, especially when compared to XESS. My suggestion, however, would be not to use any of the performance presets because some of the higher presets perform almost similarly at a much better visual quality. At 58% render resolution, my suggestion would be to use FSR 2.0 because it provides both the highest performance and best visual quality at this resolution. At 66% render resolution or the quality preset, I think would be the first time that I could recommend NVIDIA Image Scaling or FSR 1.0 if you really need the additional boost in performance. Otherwise, FSR 2.0 is definitely the way to go. And finally, at ultra quality or quality because FSR 2.0 doesn't have an ultra quality preset, the recommendation would still be to use FSR 2.0 because even though it is slightly less performant than NVIDIA Image Scaling or FSR 1.0, it still provides much better anti-aliasing and details are much better resolved. And with that, let's move on to the sharpening and anti-aliasing options of Modern Warfare 2. NVIDIA Deep Learning Anti-Aliasing actually reduces performance on both of my systems by roughly 10%. And when looking at a visual comparison, we can see that basically all of the lines are much less jaggy. You can see for instance on this power line there, and then many textures look much sharper. Compared to using simple Filmic SMA two times, which basically has only a negligible impact on performance, at least in the normal mode, we can see that there is essentially not much of an improvement. The power line looks ever so slightly more anti-aliased than with simple SMA two times. However, honestly, the difference is shockingly small. Finally, there isn't much of an FPS penalty associated with Fidelity FX cast. I'm using this at 40% strength and you can see what this basically does is it kind of just sharpens up the entire game quite a bit 
textures become much more contrasty and appear high resolved as they actually are, and this used to be my go-to preset in Modern Warfare 2. The only big downside of Fidelity FX cards of course is that there is no anti-aliasing. However, obviously we can combine it with Filmic SMA two times, which improves the situation a little bit. So I guess in summary we could say that XES Ultra Quality is kind of a cheap anti-aliasing. If you don't want any performance hit from anti-aliasing then use XES Ultra Quality. Nvidia image scaling in the native preset in my opinion is a little bit pointless because you're simply not able to add anti-aliasing to this preset. Whereas on the other hand FX cars which looks almost identical has identical performance impact you can combine with Filmic SMA two times. And finally, if you just want the best possible anti-aliasing, if you don't want any pixelation, no dancing trees, nothing like that, then the only option for you in this game really is to go with NVIDIA DLAA, which unfortunately comes at a hefty 10% FPS penalty. Now, if you guys are still hungry for even more information regarding the different graphical options in Modern Warfare 2, then definitely check out this video where I'm going through each and every of the other graphical settings. I show you the performance impact, which kind of settings have no effect on multiplayer and which you might want to enable in order to gain a few percentage performance in Modern Warfare 2. I will update this video as soon as Season 5 has launched, so stay tuned for that. Thank you so much for watching, have a wonderful day and I'll see you guys in the next video.